Mm. All right, uh, to Steve with Catholic from Christian Music Network and we're here with Meg Amends. So, how are you doing? Hey, I'm great. Thank you so much, Steve, for having me, uh, just giving me the chance to be here tonight. Thank you. Great. So tell me about your, yourself. About myself. Uh, I am married with three kids who are, I've got awesome kids. They're eight, seven, and four. We live in Florida right now, just coming up on a year. Uh, God brought us here for my husband's job, but just in, in such a God way, he connected us real quickly with some people uh, in a local church. Uh, so we feel really blessed to be where we are, even though it's been, you know, it takes a while to transition to a new place. Um, I, so I'm a worship leader. I'm a songwriter and uh, I'm kind of a, I guess you'd say an indie artist as far as the labels that people want to give you. You know, yeah, uh, <laughs> I write worship music. I also write, you know, Christian singer songwriter, um, just I kind of write a variety of things. Um, yeah, and I, I just, I'm in a good place. I feel more free to do that than ever right now. After, um, you know, God met, I was on staff at some some great churches over the years and I uh, went to CFNI, uh, Christ for the Nations Bible College. And then uh, just been really doing ministry in one way or another, whether full-time or volunteer ever since. Great, so great, kind of, great. Yeah. Great. So, what uh, what what songs are are you gonna sing so, tonight? Well, yes, yes. Yeah, I I thought that I would love to definitely sing uh, my new song. I just released a song. Um, okay. Let's see, not quite two weeks ago. It's called City of God, and um, it has a just a story attached to it. That I guess all songs have a story. If you're a writer, there's a backstory to everything you ever write. Yeah. But uh, this one was just real special because uh, my dad passed away last year after um, just a decline in health. And uh, he was a wonderful, wonderful man and a really, of course, important figure in my life. And um, I was able to share that I wrote the song with a friend just about a month before he died. And okay. in fact, exactly one month before he died. Wow. And um, because we'd been watching him suffer, you know, and, and had to journey through that as a family. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I think that was the place that my life was in when I sat down to write this song with a friend. Cedric Israel is a great friend of mine. And um, and so that had been on our heart, just, you know, big life questions and the big things you have to wrestle with in life. And we wrote this song uh, and I was able to share it with my dad just with a, you know how you make a work tape for any songwriters mm -hmm. out there, you know, you record it on your phone and it's not the professional version. It's, you know, it has mistakes and the sound quality is not good, um, but it's recorded. And uh, I was able to share that with my dad in the hospital and that really moved him. And it really encouraged him in, you know, for sure what was the hardest season of his life. So it became really special to our family and I was able to record it this year and I just released it. Um, so it's just a song that's super special to me. It's a modern kind of a hymn and um, I've already seen it just get to go out and encourage other people in, in some similar circumstances to my dad. So I feel like it kind of has a mission on it. Um, if someone is suffering, uh, if someone needs encouragement for the, the, the hard road they're walking right now, and, you know, even in their last days, you know, those hardest days, maybe just a, a good reminder. So it's called City of God, and I'll play that for you. Um, it's available everywhere. So I don't want to be all pitchy or anything tonight and like try to sell but it's out there and, yep. and I'm excited to, you know, uh, to see it out in a way that can bless people. And I think that it will. Um, so that is one song I was going to sing for you tonight. And then okay. I didn't know if we just would sing some worship all together. Uh, um, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, uh, yes, yeah, usually like three songs, you know, yeah. So, sure. yeah, yeah, so. All right, well, do you want me to do that right now? Sure, yeah. Okay, sure. Definitely. I'm here on the piano and I, I'm okay. sorry that I couldn't get a better shot to, uh, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. sorry to see. So okay. I am right as down there. As long as, you, as we, yeah, see you, mm -hmm. that's more and more important. So. I suppose so. So let me just put it down here. <laughs> yeah. this, uh, can you hear my voice and the piano? Uh, yeah. I can turn my piano down if you need to, so you can, you know, hear my voice, do you think? Uh, well, I mean, I mean, you can try it first. Just. 
All right, sure. That's the joy of these little home setups, right? Yeah, oh, I know, I know, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so this verse, uh, this, song, this song just talks about keeping your eyes on the city of God. Um, so through, imagine like a pilgrim's progress kind of journey you know, that we all take in our lives. And there are hard parts and good parts. And I feel like this song just comes along and maybe speaks to where you might be you know, as a traveler and just as an encouragement to keep your eyes on where we're going. Yep, exactly. So, yeah, so it's called City of God. Traveler on the narrow way to streets of gold through heaven's gates, though climb be steep and roll be low. Keep your eyes on the city Keep your eyes on the city of God. 
Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Really nice song. So yeah. 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 So what's that will the next a one. what? That will forever be a special one. Yep. Because of because of my dad, I will always think of my father and be thankful yeah. for my father again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I had go for the same thing with my dad too. So, you know, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, there are of course important conversations we have to wrestle with in our own hearts, you know, and and <clears throat> COVID and, and everything that's going on, you know, right now with yeah. just our world feeling kind of like a mess. You yeah. know, if you don't have hope, you know, how, I mean, as hard as we view the world as being right now, you know, we have a great hope as Christians and, and there are people who feel so much heavier and so much more hopeless because they're looking at all these same circumstances, but yet they don't have that hope, you know, and how heavy these things would feel without that. So it's, it's a gift to trust the promises that God's given us for the future that is coming. And um, I, I know there's even like some debates and there's some church theology that kind of circulates right now that, you know, heaven's on earth and we have everything. And, and um, I, I've actually <laughs> been thinking about that um, as if our modern culture has kind of said, well, you know, heaven's great, but we have this comfortable, wonderful life now. And, and yes, God's promises are for now, but I was just thinking how that doesn't really fly across. That doesn't really work in every country and it doesn't work exactly. through, through, I mean, there's a lot of third world countries where that kind of American Christianity just doesn't work. No, and, no, it and doesn't. There's, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, but yet what has stood the test of generations and generations around the world is the future hope that we have, because we're simply not promised that life is going to be rosy. And, um, you know, if any, any westernized Christian that says that, you know, I don't know that they can go to a third world country and say that to the believers there because yep. there's people that, you know, we, we are so almost embarrassingly blessed here, you know, and, and so what stands true for generations and across all nations is this. So I hope that that can encourage a lot of people that, you know, today or right now in this world, is just a passing through kind of thing. And, and there's a great, great reward that we are hoping on and, and believing in, so. Yeah, well, I mean, God is an eternal God, you know, and, and his promises are yes and amen. So, so yeah, and, and, and this life is just temporary, you know, so, yeah. you know, yeah. I mean, I mean <clears throat> compared to eternity, this is just a, you know, yeah, yeah, this is just, you know, you know, short span, you know, you know, I mean, I mean, the Bible says it's about, you know, uh, 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 um, that that life is just 70 years, you know, and, or more, and then that's it, you know, yeah. you know, you, you know, yeah, and I was telling a friend of mine says, you know, when we get to heaven, we'll be saying, we'll be asking ourselves, why was I so upset, you know? Yeah. You know, why, why I was so uptight and instead of just enjoying life, you know, I just, I was just upset all the time, mm. you know, yeah. Yeah, well, we have a great hope that's, and that perspective helps that us in is. our hardest seasons. So thankful for those promises that keep our eyes lifted, you know, yep. turn your eyes upon Jesus as the hymn says, that's a great promise we have, so. Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, what's that. your next song? There you yeah, go. Um, um, <clears throat> this next one is called Grace. What have you done? Um, and I like to imagine this is not something I would go and tell another person. It's like if someone read my journal, you know, if if we have these moments that we we know ourselves so well and we you know, <laughs> social media kind of sees our highlight reels, you know, sees the best of our lives, but we know the worst in our lives. We know how stubborn we are. We know how selfish we are. Um, you know, we are super aware of those things and, and we don't necessarily air them all all the time. But um, I think the longer we walk with Jesus and the more revelation we have of like 
we're kind of lucky that he loves us because we see the unlovable parts of ourselves. And uh, so this is almost like just a glimpse of, of me being thankful for what Jesus has done for me, you know? So it's called Grace, What Have You Done? And um, by the way, how was the piano and voice level in that uh, Um, Good. Okay, because I can good. turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect, yeah, yeah. Good, good, good. Change it. It's hard. I can't really change it mid song too well, but I can change it before the next one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you found me in my brokenness when I had nothing left but defense.
Have you done? Yep. Good. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. That's one that's being worked on right now in the studio. So hopefully that will come out in the new year. Okay. So, yep. Good. Yep. Uh, let's see that one. I'm trying to think. I think we'll end on. Uh, I had a couple options in my head. So I was trying to think. Da, do uh, on this show, do people like singing along to anything or they prefer originals? Uh, anything, you know, yeah, so, you know, yeah, so, uh, okay. I mean, it, it, it's up to you, you know, you, you know yeah. So. Oh. Well, I wasn't sure exactly how the format would go, but I was thinking of singing What a Beautiful Name It Is with everyone, because then whoever will be watching can join us and have a moment of worship together. Okay. No, no, all right. Uh, what a Beautiful Name It Is.
So, uh, uh, um, how can we contact you? Yeah, um, uh, I'm pretty active on Facebook and Instagram. Okay. So uh, you can look me up, Meg Ammons, so M E G, and then A M M O N S. Um, I'm. Uh, it's really easy for me to respond on Instagram. If you, if someone wants to message me, I'll answer you there. Um, Facebook is kind of weird. If if someone sends you a message, you know that that you're not personally friends with yet. Sometimes like they disappear and you don't see them. I've yeah, noticed. Yeah. So um, I have much better luck on Instagram. So it's just at Meg Ammons. Um, and you can stay up to date there. I have um, City of God just released. There's a beautiful lyric video my friend helped me put out for that. Um, nice. And just uh, when new music or whatever, whatever I'm doing, you'll hear about it. If you follow me on those spots, that'd be cool. Okay, great, 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 great. Yeah. So what are your iconic concerts like? Concerts? Well, I don't currently do a lot of concerts um, because I'm leading worship at my church. Okay. You know, um, I mean, that broadcasts every Sunday morning along with a great message and a great team, of course, people making that happen. Um, and we do some originals there. Uh, so that's a, it's a really neat outlet for me. I've always wanted to see a worship songwriting culture at the churches I've been at and um, just in a good season and a good place where that's beginning to happen. Um, so you can catch us there. Um, and I, other than that, I mean, I don't really, I'm not able to travel a lot to do, you know, I'm not backed by people or labels. It's, I'm just an independent. So, um, I've done some house things and some special events at churches, but that's kind of been my scope. However, if someone, uh, saw me on here and said, come on, I would try to come on. <laughs> so Great. I mean, I love to minister. I've just been a little limited with young children and things like that. So mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll so, see what that has in the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 so you have enough material if uh, somebody you know wants you to to do to do music. Yeah, I mean, I I can lead worship from the piano. Um, I don't have a band I travel with or anything, but I have okay. you know tracks from some other releases. And uh, if there's a local band that wants just 
some help leading worship, things like that. Just uh, if someone contacts me, we could try to work some things out. Like I said, I'm in the Florida area. Um, so I have some opportunities to travel, but I have to be careful, you know, um, in this season with young kids, you know, I can't travel a whole lot, but, um, if someone, uh, was just, if that was a good connection, we could probably make some things happen. So yeah, you are welcome to contact me. Anyone is, and, uh, we'll go from there. All right. Great, 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 great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Thanks yeah. again for allowing me to come on and just share my heart. It's, it's as a, <clears throat> I'm, as a songwriter, it's, it's so nice to think that some people that you don't know yet might hear your songs, you know? Yes, yes. It's just a special kind of joy as a songwriter and to know that things that God has spoken in my heart that have blessed me can can be sent out to bless you people that I never hear from or never meet. Mm -hmm. So I send them out with my blessing. Yeah. Yes, yes. Well, mu well music is universal, you know? Yep. Yeah. It, yeah. it, it break, breaks all bonds that, you know, that, that, you know, all communications and things like that, all languages, you know, yep, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Music can do that, so. It's such a gift. Awesome. And, and when it's under, you know, when, when there are Jesus loving people that are using that gift to proclaim truth and that anointing that goes out on it, I'm telling you, I, so powerful like you just said, it's such a powerful force uh, for the kingdom to be used as a weapon, you know? Yep, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, well, well, in, in the Bible, when they, uh, uh, in, the King, in the Old Testament, uh, usually when they have a war, they will send out the musicians first. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Isn't it? I mean, that's an incredible story to actually read through and imagine you know, but uh, yeah, we see it time and time again. Music is a gift. It, it's our ministry. To, it's mm. a way of ministry to the Lord. It's a way of ministering to other people. It's it becomes our weapon to you know, fight the lies of the enemy with the truth. Yeah. And um, yes, there's nothing like a song in your heart. So mm. carry, mm. sing them, yeah. sing your song. Be be who you are and sing who God made you to be. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Do you have any advice? For to um, musicians? Um, advice to musicians. Um, yes. Musicians, songwriters, maybe anyone yes. younger. Right. Um, I'm old enough to actually, yes, I have, there's a whole group of younger people coming up under me. So to people my, you know, say middle age or whatever, I would say let young people come up because, you know, it's a terrible thing when middle aged people you know, say, are still wanting the spotlight for themselves. And there's a whole generation coming up that needs fathered and mothered and given opportunities. And here are all these people in the middle still trying to get their moments. So you have to let the young people that come up. But to the young people, I would just say, you have to become your own champion of yourself, but do that in humility because, um, you know, you might be an 18 year old girl who's written a song and, and you thought it was great and, and no one else really, you know, just took up that song and ran with it. And it can feel discouraging or something, but it's always about more than one song. If you believe that God gave you one song, believe that he'll give you many more and put in the work. And um, you have to believe in yourself because you can't expect other people to believe in you more than you believe in mm -hmm. you. Yeah. So you have to wrestle that out with God and decide, is this what I'm called to do? And if it is, then you got to believe that and you got to act like and live like and choose like and practice like you really do believe that um, because you have to, I mean, you'll get some no's, you'll get some people that don't think your new favorite song is that great. You'll, you'll have all those kind of things that, that could de derail someone who is um, maybe off mission. So you have to stay on mission and just keep going. You know, just keep going. You may not get the glory you thought you wanted at 18 or 25 or 35. You know, I'll be, I mean, if we're talking real, I mean, I'm 42 and, and I've had some opportunities I'm grateful for in the last, say, five-ish years. But there were a lot of years in my late teens and my 20s and my 30s. And I thought, God, you know, shouldn't I have kind of like had a breakthrough by now or something? And yeah. it's so easy to compare your race to everyone else's race. But um, I think God has just been doing that work in me to, to, I used the word revel the other day, to revel 
in the plan God has for you because we spend so much time in, 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 in creative communities, musical communities, there can be so much jealousy and uh, there can be so much spirit of competition instead of cooperation. And sometimes you, you just don't, don't even want to be happy for someone else because maybe it lessens your chances of you doing, you know, your thing. And uh, it destroys, you know, this beautiful thing that God meant for us to share. Um, but if you're the younger writers, just recognize that it's, you're in it for the long game. So suit yourself up and ready yourself for long game. So you get a bump in the road. Someone doesn't like your song. You know, you, I don't know all the little things that can derail you. You just have to have your face set like Flint on the Lord and keep your eyes on the real prize. And sometimes the real prize is not the prize that a lot of people are chasing. So your prize is to hear well done, good and faithful servant. And to say that you stewarded what you were given well. And then all the results are up to the Lord. So don't trade anointing for hustle. You do your best, but you, you make sure you haven't polluted the well that all of this is supposed to be coming from as you serve and as you step out. And I don't know, I could say a lot. I have a lot of things. I've lived through some experiences and, but my heart would be for the younger people that could be watching is to stay the course and to, to stay that in 20 years, you're still here and mm -hmm. you're not brokenhearted and bitter over in the corner and have forsaken the call of God in your life. If you're called, continue in it, please, for the love of God and for the good of the church, stick it out. Yep, yeah. yep, yep, yep. So what was I had for you? Hmm? What's I had for, for oh. you? Well, hmm. um, I mean, um, I have some releases. I've, after not releasing music kind of for a little while, um, in my own name, like I've done some stuff with my, my previous church and with people and songs, had some great opportunities there. Um, but I'm just getting back to hopefully releasing some regular, you know, regular releasing music. And for now, that kind of looks like just singles one at a time, because that's kind of the pace that I can, I can establish and keep rolling with that fits into my life. Um, so I'm hopefully every Every two months or more often, I'll have a new song out. So if you if you follow my social stuff, you'll you'll find me and you'll see that, and uh, hopefully you'll be blessed by it. Um, uh, my church is getting ready to do some music releasing as well. So some of the congregational, you know, the kinds that you'd put in a set list. Um, mm -hmm. Some of what I write um, that is congregational may be released through Generation Music. Um, so that's an exciting thing we've been working on. Like I, I was telling you, uh, Steve, just I've had a heart for a long time to see a worship, like songwriting culture out of my church. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel like every church God has led me to through stages of my life. Um, I, I feel like I've gotten closer and closer to that kind of, the kind of environment, you know, like the 18 year old Meg would have loved to step into, you know? Okay. Uh, and I think God's just put the desire in me to help be a part of the solution, you know, and help create that place where where young, young creative people, writers, songwriters, musicians can, you know, really be mentored and and have an outlet for their creativity just in, in their own church house, you know, and see songs come that will bless the church and, and maybe go beyond, you know. The beyond is just icing on the cake, I think, to it just blessing our own body of believers where we are. So that's kind of what's ahead for me, just writing and singing and going through the doors, God opens for me, so. Great, 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 great. Uh, any last words? At, again, just thank you for letting me pop on here. Um, I'm excited, I'm grateful to the Lord and um, be happy to connect with anyone who gets to watch this and just find me and we'll be friends on, on Facebook. Yep. Sounds great. <laughs> Yep, 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 yep. Well, uh, I, I, I would like to thank you for coming on. You know, yeah, yeah, it was a real pleasure. So, yep, yep, and uh, and uh, and the and uh, and I'll resume next week with um, with with a uh, with a uh, favorite uh, James Harvey of Think of Three. So, 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 yep, and uh, and I'll say goodbye to Meg. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Okay. Bye. Bye.